Aloha, welcome. Thank you for joining my live stream. This is Master Paul Fletcher, and I am a little bit unprepared getting my uh, microphone on at this time. That should make for a much better sound for you. Today I am going live uh, from Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center here in Honolulu. And it has been a very uh, powerful and whirlwind day. You can always tell when a big master is in town because everything feels like a big test. This morning all the, the uh, internet was acting up. I couldn't let other people know about some of the events and activities for today. I had to rely on my phone, which is fine, but the way you accomplish things is a little bit different. So lots of good testing today, which for uh, uh, somebody on the spiritual path is always such a great opportunity to ensure how to stay in alignment with the 10 Da's greatest love, greatest forgiveness, greatest light, greatest compassion, and all of the other Da's. And each moment gives us an opportunity to stay in alignment with those wonderful uh, milestones, if you will, that our beloved teacher Master Shah has brought to us. So I see a lot of people are already lining up to join the live stream, that's wonderful. <clears throat> so I want to acknowledge Kristen Rojas and Vascara. Haven't seen you in a while, Anne, great to see you. Uh, Tina, Patricia, wonderful to see you. Mary, thank you for joining so much. And so as other people join, we will go ahead and move forward. But um, Master Francisco is in town here in Honolulu. We are beyond blessed. Last night, we, uh, we had an amazing experience. I personally had an amazing experience as well. Um, we were chanting for about two out of three hours and um, love, peace, and harmony to serve all souls in humanity. And we were connected to Germany. We were connected to uh, different masters around the world. And we did many soul readings and uh, discovering about how the chanting was impacting us, how it was knitting together the world. I had some amazing third eye images of what was happening as we chanted in the Chinese language, as we chanted in the, in the Filipino Tagalog language, as, uh, as, even as I chanted in Thai, my wife's language. And um, we chanted many different languages, Japanese, and, uh, uh, um, there was Dutch and German. And, and I, would be, I would receive an image each time we chanted for a different country. And we went back around through all the different uh, uh, languages and I would be given a different image, a different layer of purification and cleansing and healing that was occurring as a result of chanting for that uh, nation with their, uh, their song. So very, very powerful to have Master Francisco in the room with us last night. And uh, of course, we have Master Hemana, Master Erlena, which are both, you know, Master Erlena is a Dishan, Master Hemana is a Tianshan. Master Francisco, of course, is a very high level master. And so, uh, uh, please join us tonight. Uh, it's free. Go to Master Shah's uh, webpage. If one of the Universal Servants can find the actual registration, because some of them are a little bit uh, not accurate, you may have to actually go to um, my Facebook page or Love, Peace, Harmony Honolulu's Facebook page to get a link. And don't just post it, actually check to see if it takes people to the actual registration. Because um, that's the kind of blockages that we are getting with these high-level masters coming to Hawaii, just left and right. Registration links aren't working and things that were working yesterday are just disappearing. And that happens when you have such an important message to bring. Uh, Master Francisco tonight uh, and Hawaii time, which is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., um, that's going to be 9 to 12 Pacific time. That's going to be 6 a.m. European time. It's going to be about uh, uh, 1 o'clock or so Australian time. Uh, India, it's going to be only maybe 11 or 12 o'clock, so perfect time for you guys. Uh, and it's complimentary, so make sure that um, you're able to attend because A, it's free, and most importantly, that you have a master. So thank you, Kristen. I hope that that link does get people to the actual registration site. Um, I appreciate that very much. <clears throat> so let us go ahead and connect before we start today's subject, which will be on applying soul power healing to our relationship with children, with our children and with children in general. 
I'll be offering some guidance, wisdom, and teachings from Master Shah's books. We'll definitely be offering blessings. And I may do a few soul readings for you and your, your children. Okay, so welcome Anne-Marie. Um, if everybody wants to hit the share button, then other people can know about this live stream. And then uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and connect. So placing our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position, uh, left hand over the message center, right hand gently pointed towards heaven. And let us close our eyes, fully connect. Dear Divine, dear Tao, dear Source, dear Master Shah, Master Shah's original soul, all beings of light, soul of this temple, masters, ascended masters, lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, all angels, healing archangels, all of our individual heavens teams, guides, angels, and saints, temple souls, we love you, we honor you, respect you, and personally, I bow down to you. We are so very, very beyond blessed, honored, and grateful for your presence, for your guidance, for your life-saving blessings, for your forgiveness, for your support on our soul journey. And we invite you to please come to be with us here today. Bless us to open our hearts, our minds. Bless us to change any mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, thinking patterns, attachments, and ego that separate us from having a pure, open heart to the children, that we can be a better servant so that their soul journey can be so blessed and enhanced. Please bless us as we chant love, peace, and harmony. Dear the source song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes. Love you, love you, love you. Please turn on in our souls and in all souls in all universes. And we invite all souls to join with us now as we chant. Close your eyes, send your greatest love. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Eloha mai iau, Eloha kako apau, E pihili mai puvai kakao, Aloha malie lokahi, Aloha how, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. I always feel better after chanting, even if it's just a few minutes. Something about the frequency of the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony that just brings such great purity and joy to my heart. So welcome, Pat. Welcome, Ari. Welcome, Liz. I saw many hearts popping up there. Although I haven't seen your name, I'm getting used to seeing some of the little pop-ups. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much. Welcome, Suki and Tina. Thank you all for joining. <clears throat> if you haven't already, please hit the share button so others uh, are aware of the live stream. Today, we are focusing on healing our relationships with our children. 
Now, all of the teachings that I share are based in a simple foundational teaching that my spiritual teacher and father, Dr. Master Shah, has brought. Dr. Master Shah is a world-renowned healer and a divine channel. He is dedicated to serve humanity, and he brings a simple understanding that soul is the boss, that everyone and everything has a soul. And so that means the relationship between us and our children also has a soul. And the reason that relationship has a soul is because it's probably not the first time we've been their parents. It's probably not the first time we've been in these roles. We might have been the child, they might have been the parent. Any number of combinations could occur. But this uh, series of relationships creates a dynamic. Sometimes that dynamic is very obvious, sometimes it's not. Many parents have a, a, a relationship with their children that are truly um, enviable in some ways. I watch, the ones that, that I'm always um, admirable of is the ones where their children, 13, 14, 15, 16, the age where, where they're all spreading their wings, uh, developing very strong mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, um, where the possibility of resistance occurs, where the possibility of talking back and not honoring the parent occurs. And I'm, I have the greatest admiration for the parent who has gained the trust of the child in such a way where regardless of what the child is going through, they're comfortable in opening up and sharing with the parent. In my observation, I have found a lot of that has to do with the parent's ability to allow the child a space of freedom to express, a space of freedom to make errors, um, to offer them guidance, wisdom, and um, boundary suggestions, and sometimes, if it's necessary, to put stronger boundaries so that they don't hurt themselves. But it, the, that kind of a parent um, earns that respect. They don't just get it at the age when the child turns 12, 13, 14, and all of a sudden the child decides to give the parent respect. No, it happens quite a bit earlier. There's the reverse side of that, and that's when the children do not honor the parent, do not respect the parent. They do when they're growing up a bit. They, they have to in many cases because the parent says, don't, you know, they, they throw their authority around without really um, <clears throat> um, respecting the child's perspective or thoughts or opinions or what's going on for them. Um, in this era that we are in, it is called the soul light era. If you pay attention to the last 15 years, uh, what has happened is the word soul is, is very predominant in society. It's utilized uh, like water. Everyone is doing soul-related things. The simple reason why is because it is the era of the soul. It is when everyone starts to recognize that they are not a personality. They have a soul. And the soul has many attributes that are different than the personality. But most importantly, the soul has a plan. It has an agenda. Your child's soul has a plan. It, has, it knows exactly what it came into this life to be. It knows that it's a child that goes through teenage years, becomes adult, and will go through relationships. And eventually, <clears throat> if it has not reached the Tao, if it has not reached the highest level of perfection, it will return and reincarnate again. The soul lives forever. The physical life is temporary. We might live 20, 30, 50, 100 years. <clears throat> it's really up to a couple of variables. The main one being that soul's entirety of its karma from all lifetimes. So you, you and your soul and your karma, your lifetime of experiences, has brought you everything up to this moment. Everything wonderful, everything not so wonderful. They've all made you the incredible person that you are today. It's the same for your child. They are unique and different from each other. <clears throat> for a parent to think that the children should be more alike or get along or whatever it is, that's, um, that's felonious. Each of those children, if they're not getting along, they have relationship karma amongst each other. They have brothers and sisters before. They could have been in any number of possible conditions, but they came together in this time, if they fight with each other, <clears throat> to help resolve their karmic differences. It is the awareness of the parent that can make a significant difference in 
the relationship of one child to another and ourselves to each child, the way we bring ourselves to both children in equality and in balance, the way we perceive things, the way we react, the way we respond is truly paramount to how that child brings themselves to life. <clears throat> in my soulmate attraction system, when I'm working with somebody, typically the average age of the person that I'm working with, uh, 30 to 50, 60. <clears throat> Not too many young ones that are out there just, just throwing their, their laurels to the wind, having a good time until they figure out that it's not working. Then they decide they want to have a real effective relationship. So the people that come to me have usually had two, three, four, five unhealthy relationships and they're a bit tired of it. They want to figure out how to do it right. <clears throat> and so part of the <clears throat> process is going through discovering what did they accept as truth in their youth? What mindsets, attitude, beliefs were they, uh, did they adopt as a result of observing and accepting as truth whatever they saw from mom, from dad, older brother, older sister, whatever they saw from peers, teachers, um, any religious society that they belong to. All of these have very uh, stiff mindsets, attitudes, beliefs. It must be done this way. It never works that way. You are this, you're not that. Um, never do that. Um, you know, all of these things that, that make us um, react in such a way where we want to please the parents, please the peers, please the, the organizations we belong to. And so we adjust our personality. When we do that, what do you think we're showing the children? We're showing them what we have learned. Whether it's, it's good for us or not good for us is, has no relevance. We as an adult, as the parent, have to take a very, very close look at what we do wrong, what we're doing right, and why, if the child is reacting to us in such a way where they're not listening, we can raise our voice and assert our power, but it absolutely is just going to damage the relationship and it's not going to help the soul of that child, it's certainly not going to help the soul of the relationship. And it takes us away from self-responsibility. This is a key in the system that I work with. <clears throat> and really it helps people in every aspect of life. You know, I call it the soulmate attraction system, but in reality, it just helps clear every blockage so that we are in alignment with love. And in that way, when we fully align to love, we attract love. Very simple. Everybody needs that, regardless if they're searching for a soulmate or not. So this, the system I developed reveals all those blockages to self-love, reveals all those blockages so that we can fully in, uh, fulfill our heart in such a way where we can um, be the presence of love for our children when they're acting out. Now, what do you think they're going to emulate later on in life? Do you think they're going to emulate that place of love that you offered them when they acted out? Or do you think they'll emulate that overreaction that you bring to the table when you don't uh, stay compassionate in the face of whatever they're bringing to the table. So a big part of being available to our children is being available to ourselves. We cannot be loving towards anyone else if we are not loving to ourselves. The child-parent relationship has karma and that karma can absolutely impact us. Uh, it will push our buttons. That's what families do. God bless families. They give us the greatest opportunity to realize all the places that we need to grow. The, 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 the general dilemma is that we don't have the skill set. We don't have the tools to transform those areas that we're able to identify. That is where the problem typically arrives. Why don't we have the tool sets? Why don't we have what it takes to transform them? because we're emulating what we saw. We don't realize that we have to take on that additional responsibility. So it's more than child psychology. It's more than doing the right thing. It's going and taking things personally in that I need to be self-responsible. If I have an immediate knee-jerk angry reaction, that is not my child's fault. It's no different with a, with a lover relationship, a spouse relationship or anything. If I am angry, it's not my fault. Today, 
I'm in the room with, with my spouse. She's hanging out in the bed. I'm busy working on the computer. I'm having all kinds of stuff happening on the uh, electronic front that's challenging me and testing me. And I'm handling it well, or so I think. And then I hear my wife uh, eating with, with her mouth open. And she's eating celery, so it makes a lot of noise, right? It triggers a childhood issue where my stepfather used to really get mad at us and he'd smack us if we don't eat with our mouth closed. Now, I'm getting irritated at my wife. Is that her issue or is that mine? The trigger was from my childhood. I knew that. I saw it right there. I took responsibility, stood up, walked outside, tapped on my body, asked for forgiveness, gave myself love, forgave my stepfather for teaching me incorrectly, walked back in, and everything was fine, completely gone. But it required me to be present. It required me to recognize self-responsibility. How can we possibly be available to serve that child or any person in our relationship if we don't take self-responsibility for our um, communication, where we are at in that moment with that child in this case, since we're talking about our relationship with our children. So I want to stop and acknowledge some of the new people that have come in. <clears throat> um, so Kathy, wonderful to see you. Uh, Norma, Pat, Dove, Johnny, Rita, Barry. Um, Norma again, thank you so much for your comments, Norma. Donna, Loveness, Mel Mel Mailana. Um, and Kristen, thank you for sharing the website, Kristen. Chrissy, wonderful to see you. So thank you all for joining. I truly appreciate your open heart to see what this is all about. See if this is something that resonates with you. So I will continue now. So when we are, in order to be in the healthiest place, to benefit our children, to benefit ourselves, to benefit the relationship, it all starts in here. It all starts here. Most of us do not have the tools or the, um, the practiced ability to uh, catch where we are at and to change our heart so that we can be present to whatever is going on for that child and for ourselves. If we had angry parents, that's typically what we bring to the table. Now, if you're 30, 40, 50 years old, most likely you've done some form of psychology, some form of self-work, some form of regression, some form of something. You wouldn't even be on this show if you didn't have a, a soul that was open-minded. You just, you wouldn't be here, okay? And so that tells me that you have a desire to open up your heart, to, to learn more. Dr. Master Shah, who has written well over 20 books, 10 of which are New York Times bestsellers, um, teaches that when you heal the soul first, then the energy and matter follows. So let me offer a different way of looking at that. The soul, as indicated earlier, lives forever. This lifetime is temporary. The soul in each, each experience has many, many amazing experiences, which makes the soul very intelligent. When we incarnate, the soul has a plan. Okay, tell you 100%, our soul has a plan. Your child's soul has a plan. How can we be in alignment with that plan if we're not paying attention? How can we serve our soul and its journey and bring the most joy to us and the least suffering for us so that we can be fully present for our child so that they can have the most joy, so they can have the least suffering? We start by recognizing responsibility for our soul and its journey. We start by giving our self-love and removing the negative mindsets, negative attitudes and beliefs, removing those uh, wrong and false systems that we have accepted as a child. The first step is recognition, okay? Uh, I gave the example a moment ago where I recognized I was getting irritated by hearing uh, my wife making noise, um, but I recognized it wasn't her. We have to do the same thing when somebody triggers us. We have to stop, okay? That knee-jerk reaction will no longer serve you, certainly won't serve them, and it's absolutely not serving your soul journey. How can getting angry serve your soul journey? <laughs> it can't, I promise you it can't. And so we stop. If you have to depart, leave the room. Okay, I'm irritated. What is it that's bringing this irritation? Connect. It always boils down to a feeling or a need. What am I feeling right now? I'm feeling angry. 
go deeper, guys. There's always something deeper than anger. Why am I feeling angry? Okay. Uh, well, maybe it's not anger. Maybe I'm feeling more, it's more of an irritation. It's more of a frustration. Yeah, it's a frustration. So find the right feeling, very key. When you find the right feeling, you ask yourself why? What is it that I'm needing? In my case, I have a big issue with repeating. I speak very fluently. I have trained myself to speak very clearly. I value and have attachment to speaking something once, and then people would understand my attachment, my problem to have this belief system. And then I get a wife that doesn't understand very good English and certainly doesn't understand the incredible nomenclature that I know how to use. So now I have to learn to speak multiple times and be perfectly okay with it. What's the point? We have to catch where our feelings and needs are. If we can identify what we're needing by identifying first what we're feeling, we can validate ourselves. We can bring ourselves down off that anger, off that irritation, whatever it may be, and discern what's truly going on. Then we can bring ourselves back to that child relationship, uh, spouse relationship, whatever it is, and be compassionate, be loving and present. Actually hear what that child or a, a, a spouse has to say. The tools to transform it are given to us by Dr. Master Shah. Heal the soul first and the mind and body follows. When we transform the soul level blockages, the soul lives many, many lifetimes. It carries with it all of the incredible virtue, the, all the wonderful things we've ever done. It also carries with it all of the unpleasant things that we have done, and that's called spiritual debt. So when we incarnate, we are given the greatest opportunity to use the spiritual virtue to bring about positive and beautiful things in our life. And as those occur, we are given little tests and opportunities to transform the spiritual debt that, our, that we had generated that our soul carries from lifetime to lifetime. That's what I mean by the soul has a plan. Its intention is to transform the spiritual debt so that it can have more virtue, so that it can raise its soul standing, open its heart, become more and purest love, find its way back to the divine. That's always every soul's intention, to serve, to open its heart, to become one. Every soul has the same intention. But we must comprehend that and apply that with each moment in life. Each um, unpleasant thing that occurs, that argument, that uh, uh, irritation with, uh, with a family member, the relationship has a soul. That argument could have happened at a previous time, possibly early in life, and now it's come back around to remind us how to transform it. It could have been the exact same major argument that we had with that child when the roles were reversed. What if it's an argument about... Um, them going out, let's say you have a daughter and she's 14, right? And, and you just have so much fear around. She's 14, she's beautiful, all the guys are starting to pine after her and there's just a tremendous amount of fear around it. You feel powerless, right? How do you deal with that as a parent? You deal with that by creating love and a place where they feel safe and communicating with you. So you start by recognizing what is that argument that's occurring? Where that argument occurs is very likely where it can be fixed. How do you fix it? You start with forgiveness. You start with recognizing that they have a soul and you have a soul, and there is an opportunity to bring to that condition love. Dr. Master Shah says, heal the soul first and the mind and body follows. The argument of condition could be, especially if it's a heavy one, could be at the soul level. Possibly, I'm not saying this could, this is what's happening, but it certainly is a possibility. In a previous time, the roles were reversed. Maybe you were uh, the child, and maybe uh, your child was the parent, and they were trying to stop you from doing something they wanted to do. Okay, and so now there's an opportunity to heal that. What if it's just the first time? What if you don't believe in more than one lifetime? That's okay. If it is the first time, do you really want to create a spiritual debt with your child by denying them something if it's truly not going to hurt them? It depends, of course, on the subject matter. You have to make conscious choices as a parent. But 
many times we simply make knee-jerk defensive reactive responses because of our fear. Whereas if we have a loving relationship with that child, we can share with them. You know, I want to share with you, I have a great deal of fear and apprehension. Um, it's important that I allow you to be uh, spread your wings, to, to, to move towards adulthood, and to make choices that you'll learn from and, uh, and both not harm yourself. And I want you to know that this fear and apprehension comes because I see you are a beautiful young lady. And I worry because I, I understand the mind of some boys. Um, they, they may not respect you the way uh, I, I hope that you, you, you want to be respected. You start that kind of a conversation by letting them know where your weakness is at. Instead of saying, no, don't. What's behind that no, don't? It's a clear expression. How do we transform these things easier, better, faster? What if that's already happened and the ability to communicate with them is a bit too far down the road? You've already burned the bridges, so to speak. Now you're like, oh man, what do I do? What you do is you use the wisdom and teachings that Dr. Master Shah brought to us. You use them to transform the blockages that are now residing at the level of soul. Okay? You would do this, you could do this anytime, even if your relationship with the children is good. You can do it if it's bad. You can do what I'm about to share with you in person or without them ever being present. It works the same, okay? And so how do we heal the soul first? We start by utilizing soul power. When you recognize that everyone and everything is a soul, and every soul is a spark of the divine, it has God in it, um, and that every soul wants to serve so that it can open its heart, find its way back to the divine. Very basic set of understanding, but when you start to recognize that, you go, oh, we are all one in, from the get-go. We just think, you know, I had a, a teacher that was about 30 years ago, and he said, we're all one ocean, but when there's a big wave and the wave hits, and these splashes fly up, little dot here, little splash uh, 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 of uh, uh, a dot of um, water there. The little, the little droplet flies up and it says, I'm free, I'm alone, I'm separate. But the big ocean is right there. It momentarily came away from the ocean and it has the ego response, I'm separate. But the truth is it's not. Same with our children. When we work at the level of soul, what in essence we're doing is we're recognizing we're all part of the ocean. Therefore, any communication that occurs does not have to be in person. It absolutely does not have to be in person. You can accomplish miracles by just talking directly to the soul of both that person and the relationship. I tell you, this power is brought to earth by Dr. Master Shah. I have done so many amazing things with soul conferencing. So we're going to practice this together and we're going to use some of the tools from Dr. Master Shah's book. Now <clears throat> we're going to use the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony and this is a song that um, is not your basic everyday song for anyone new that's watching. I'm going to ask one of the Universal Servants to post the Love, Peace, Harmony link. Um, you can download the song, it's free, the copyright was removed. The song uh, is a divine song. It carries extraordinary frequency. You could literally put it in your house next to the child you're having a war with and things would smooth over in a much faster period of time just from the frequency generated from this song. We're going to use that in combination with the four power technique to transform the soul level blockages or prevent soul level blockages with our children in advance of them ever showing up. Okay? So, Four powers. There is soul power, mind power, which is creative visualization. There is body power, which is how we place our hands and how we, we either stand or sit. And then there is sound power. Sound power is mantra, which is what we will chant. In this case, we're going to chant the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. But I'm also going to use, to bring healing to all of you, powers that I have uh, received through Master Shah. And the highest... Uh, transmission to the greatest love calligraphy, the Da I calligraphy. It's in the new Soul Over Matter book. I know in your uh, image it's backwards. This new book is called Soul Over Matter. And the Da I calligraphy is already extraordinary. The, um, the creation ball that Master Shah put in this uh, makes it 
beyond extraordinary. And I will be tracing this on your behalf to bless you and your children and your relationship with your children. So <clears throat> wherever you're at, sit up straight. Bring your back away from the back of the chair. Uh, thank you, Kristen Rojas, for placing the link for the lovepeaceharmony.org. Uh, please pay attention to the site after we're done. Go back there. Um, become an emissary to bring love, peace, and harmony to the world. Teach your children this song. I tell you, they will learn it in two minutes, and they'll be singing it all day long because their soul will instantly recognize it. Their soul will be so grateful. It will bring so much joy to you and your family. Um, sit up straight. Place one hand over your heart center, one hand over your lower abdomen. This would be body power. Ideally, if your back is away from the back of the chair, you'll have a greater uh, opportunity to receive the healing that is coming. We're going to ask the soul of your children, all of them, to come. Doesn't matter if the children are, are crossed over or if they're in the present moment, okay? We will still be able to serve them. That's another tremendous value of soul-to-soul -soul communication. It doesn't matter by time or space. <clears throat> Remember, we're all part of the ocean, so regardless of where that droplet is, it's still part of the ocean. It's beautiful, huh? All right, so visualization. You would close your eyes. Visualize the souls of your children coming in front of you. Repeat after me. Dear the souls of my children, all the children from the past, my current children, and the possibility of any future children that will join my life. Could you please come in front of me at this time? I love you. From the bottom of my heart, I truly, deeply love you. And now we ask for forgiveness. Please forgive me if I have harmed you in this lifetime, in any lifetime. I am so grateful for this opportunity to connect my heart to yours, to clear the blockages that may be present in our relationship, to build our trust and love for each other. Please forgive me if I have spoken wrongly to you, if I have physically harmed you, if I have brought emotions to you that have created suffering in your life, if I have created any form of blockages in your soul journey, I love you so much, I sincerely, sincerely ask for your forgiveness. If you, my beloved child, have brought harm to me, created emotional or mental suffering for me. If you have harmed me physically or in any way, I offer you my unconditional forgiveness. I love you. Thank you. So this is soul power. Whenever we do soul power, we always offer forgiveness. Keep with your eyes closed. See the children in front of you with your eyes closed. Keep sending them your love. The sound power will be the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. <clears throat> Continue to repeat after me. Dear, the song of love, peace, and harmony. I love you. As Master Paul sings, could you please bless myself and my children and my relationship with each of my children and the relationship between my children and each other. I am so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so now I will do the chanting. You're more than welcome to chant if you know the words. If you do not, just continue to send love to your child. Just continue to connect. Be in that very grateful space, especially if you have a, a severe condition with the children, okay? Make sure you ask for forgiveness for those conditions. I will also do a special tracing for you using the very powerful healing calligraphies that Master Shah has blessed us with. <clears throat> Dear all my highest love treasures and my jindan for love, peace, and harmony, please turn on. Please offer blessing to everybody on the line.
to the creator Jim Don Ball, transmitted to Da I Greatest Calligraphy. Please offer your greatest love to all those on the line for this area of request as appropriate. I am deeply honored. Let us begin. Continue to visualize yourself and your children hugging each other, dancing together, releasing any of the blockages from this and all time. Repeat after me. This blessing is for you. Dear my beloved self, dear every mindset I have ever had against myself, about being a good parent. Every belief, every negative belief I have ever judged myself with. Please forgive me, my beloved soul, for believing anything negative about myself. I now know that everything that I have accepted as truth is question is should be questioned that if my speaking to myself is with love then I accept that if I deny myself love then I release that false teaching Please forgive me, my beloved soul, for not accepting my beloved divine creator's unconditional love. Please forgive me for judging myself, because when I judge myself, I am not allowing God's unconditional love into my heart. I ask the soul 
of all of the negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs about my self, about my parenting skills, to transform to love and light. Thank you to these souls for teaching me that I no longer need them. I can fill my heart with God's love. I can release these false beliefs now, knowing that everything is at the soul level and that these souls have served me to recognize their false teaching. Thank you, these beautiful negative memories. I release you now to love and light. Lula, lula, li. Continue to dance with your children. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. your eyes closed. The healing and my healer transmissions are still continuing. I will now offer a live soul reading. <clears throat> as exactly what is happening at this time as the healing is continuing for you, for your children, for your relationships with your children, for the relationships of each child with each other. How this is a spokesperson for the soul of all of the relationships that are receiving the blessings at this time. <clears throat> this wisdom, this blessing, this opportunity, this moment is truly the greatest moment ever. Because it is in this moment 
that you are healing everything that is pertinent to your health, life, love, and well-being. And now this moment is the greatest moment ever for your healing and your child's healing. And now this moment, do you start to understand that each and every moment is an opportunity to transform the relationship not only with yourself, which is the source of the suffering for yourself, but you may also apply the teachings, the wisdom, the blessings, and the tools to bless the relationships with your loved ones. Each of your children's souls have been present since they have been called. Each of them have been asking you for forgiveness for this and other lifetimes in which they have created suffering for both of you. These children are bowing down to each other, making promises and vows that they will work diligently to self-clear the karmic debt between them. All of the souls are bowing down to the divine because of the Creator's incredible love and blessings during this time. The source soul song of love, peace, and harmony has transmitted a tremendous amount of frequency that literally has changed the message of your children, of your relationship with your children, of the relationship with them amongst each other. The new message will create almost instantly a different way of communication amongst you. Pay attention to this. Offer your deepest and greatest gratitude for any shift whatever it may be. One of the most important things to understand about the divine, the divine soul song and soul healing is that these all serve unconditionally regardless of your belief, regardless of your awareness. The key is to actually do the practice. Many souls in humanity are unaware they have received this source soul song. They are unaware of the power that this song has to transform you and your family's life. If every household in the world simply played this song, there would literally be peace in the world. This is possible very simply because it is the divine's frequency. Strife struggle, war, and all things other than love simply could not survive in that frequency. But if you just brought this to your household, kept it on in your room 24-7, and made note in your journal of the differences in your life, if you taught your children to chant this song to serve other children in the world that are less fortunate, and make note in your journal of the shifts in their grades at school and their communication with each other in their reactions and responses to you. You would be completely amazed. It is highly likely within 30 or so days you would not even recognize the children anymore that their love and way of being would have transformed so drastically that you would be fully and completely convinced of the power and the significance of this song, this power of soul, and the way to bring healing to all aspects of your life. This is but a very small teaching at this time of the power and significance of this practice and what you can further do to sustain this in every area of your life. You are all beyond blessed. You are deeply loved and we are truly so very grateful for this blessing today. This is the soul of one who is speaking for the soul of all of the relationships that were blessed in this practice. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs>
time goes way too fast. Please share. What was your experience? Did you see anything? Did you have a heart opening experience with your children? Did you have a release that you were praying for but didn't know how to receive? Did you receive an aha moment? <clears throat> Do you want to know more about the Soar Soul Song? Scroll through the names. <clears throat> the websites have been listed here, lovepeaceharmony.org. Download this song. Bring it into your world. Play it on your phone all the time. Sing it. Teach your children. Put it in your house. Turn it on 24-7 at volume of one. It does not matter if you hear it. Divine frequency works whether you hear it or not. <clears throat> Transform the soul level blockages at where their, where their blockages are. Use the power of soul to transform soul blockages. Very basic teachings that Dr. and Master Shah has brought to earth. It is my greatest honor to offer these teachings. I want to finish by offering uh, opportunity for all the parents to receive a very special blessing. I have a very special empowered calligraphy for opening the heart and soul. It is a one-of-a-kind calligraphy <clears throat> and I want to offer that I will trace for uh, either the relationship between you and your child or for your child. I will trace each day asking all of the countless saints, saints, animals, temple souls, treasures, the divine, all the frequencies of this very special high-level calligraphy, all the blessings inside of it, <clears throat> to bless your children, to bless your relationship with your children. I will do this for 10 days. The total honor fee is $100. That's $10 a day. Um, I will do five days if that's all you can financially handle. I can tell you that this will absolutely bring a great deal of shift in the relationship. I do have a program that is the soulmate program, but I can tell you if you have problems in your current relationship with you, the family, the children, and it just doesn't seem to be surmountable, contact me. The same program and the way we reveal the blockages, the way we transform the blockages, operate regardless of the, in, the ended intention. <clears throat> to, to find your soulmate means to find love in yourself. The entirety of my program releases and clears the blockages so that you have that self-love so that you can attract the same frequency to you. Therefore, your soulmate obviously arrives. It works, it works well. Same thing for blockages with the children, the spouse, and anyone else in your life. <clears throat> my website is listed above my uh, image here. If you've enjoyed this and you want to, to watch me more in the future, you can click on follow in the upper right hand corner. <clears throat> you can go to my Facebook page and under the main image is the word about. Click on that and scroll down to videos. You may even have to click on the word videos and it'll open up all the past videos. Um, please share my videos with others. I have programs that can serve you. I have divine treasures that can transform your life and make things so much easier for you and your loved ones. You can also message me on Facebook just hit message and then I'll be able to answer. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity to serve you. The last thing I want to share is go to Master Francisco's event tonight. Look under Kristen Rojas. She has put the link there for that and for the uh, uh, my website as well as for Love, Peace and Harmony. Um, click on any of those. See Master Francisco's uh, event tonight. He will be offering miracle healing. You have an opportunity to witness somebody who will be in extreme suffering, go from a 10 in pain to uh, probably completely go away. I mean, I've seen it so many times, I have great faith in saying it'll probably completely go away. <clears throat> um, it's a great opportunity to understand more about soul, soul healing. There will definitely be explanations. There will be more soul readings. There will be more soul healing. And the more you understand, the more you can transform your life. My name is Master Paul Fletcher. It has been my greatest honor to serve you. I will be here tomorrow, same time. I will work more on relationships. I may stay with more children healing. I may move on. Depends on what I'm divinely guided to do. I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.